Hello again. Much as I'd enjoy rabbiting on about the Clinton-Trump contest fracturing the USA, it's a serious fractures and splits within the UK's ruling establishment over Brexit and Article 50 that commands attention today. I think for the first time I can remember there's been a populist questioning of the system. Judges, the House of Lords, not from the left, mind you, or the liberal establishment, but from a dominant right-wing faction. It all boils down to the Brexit Article 50 logjam. It inadvertently demonstrates that we still exist with an unreconstructed, pseudo-democratic, virtually unchanged, semi-feudal political setup. Centuries past its sell-by date. This latest Brexit drama is down to three judges in the High Court ruling that Brexit cannot, despite the referendum result, be automatically triggered by invoking Article 50. Now Parliament has to debate it. The right-wing press, which is most of it, is in a state of uproar. The Daily Mail is foremost in its virulent attack. The three judges are enemies of the people suggesting, probably correctly, that their beloved Brexit is being kicked into the long grass. There was talk of using the royal prerogative, but they'll keep that one for another more serious occasion. The foaming at the mouth right-wing press have even launched a personal attack on the three judges, throwing everything at them, including homophobia. Theresa May's Tory government is appealing the judgment in December to another trio of ex-public schoolboys wearing dead sheep on their heads at the Supreme Court. Strange, ironic, isn't it, that it's the right-wing elements, usually absolute defenders of the system, that are bitterly attacking these judges, and increasingly the House of Lords, who they see as future Brexit blockers, for being an unelected, undemocratic clique ranged against the will of the people. Never heard that from the swivel-eyed right before, about their judges and the House of Lords. The three judges have thrown accidentally a spotlight upon our real unreformed status quo. Two lords and a sir have put a block on the decision of 17 million voters. Nobody voted for these judges. The establishment is nothing more than a gentleman's agreement stretching back centuries, but now upsetting the cosy arrangement that our rumbles about a constitutional crisis and another general election and angry Brexiters taken to the streets. Nigel Falange himself has called for 100,000 on the streets on December the 5th to march on the justice courts. Unprecedented. But will he bottle it? We apparently voted to retain our sovereignty and take back the country. Well, here it is, folks, with a one party electoral state that cannot even trigger Article 50 and a looming constitutional crisis in a country that hasn't, had, hasn't got a written constitution. Everything seems to be decided by ex-public schoolboys and girls and by the political and financial oligarchies. Well, what a surprise. For anarchists and other malcontents, what is interesting about this verbal and principle war is that it could spiral out of control and could unleash multiple possibilities that we can't even dream of and go far beyond the hard Brexiters and put something entirely different on the agenda. We don't fear the chaos. More the better as far as we're concerned. The whole establishment has to be swept away in a revolutionary upheaval. Whatever starts this, probably accidentally, bring it on. Even if it begins with the angry Brexiters. Why wait until 2017? If Falange and his tossers want to start something, I won't be crying, except to keep from laughing. Right now, the majority of the population, the working class, in all its infinite variety, is nothing. We must become everything. This can only happen through revolutionary social upheaval. In this unreformable country, there is no other way.
all other avenues have been exhausted. Who cares? Least of all, us anarchists, what starts this process, as long as we are somewhat prepared for it, and along with others, able to react to it. Anything is better than this social peace. Smug Tories, sanctimonious Corbynistas, and their zombie politics. So, December the 5th could be quite interesting. I'll see you soon.